Four plus he commissioned, but was commissioned by the Citizens Committee. He refused to move from a whites only railway car to the blacks only car. He was arrested and convicted of violating the Louisiana Separate Car Act of 1890. Now in court, Plessy's lawyers argued the state had violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. But the presiding judge, John Ferguson, ruled Louisiana could enforce that law. Now this case would make its way to the U.S. Supreme Court and the landmark 1896 decision and the Plessy v. Ferguson case had implications that would last generations. Americans were separated then by doctrine that came to be known as separate but equal. Well, decades later, the same decision has brought two of the most unlikely people together, leading them on a journey of reconciliation. This is Homer Plessy's birth certificate. Keith Plessy says he always knew he was related to Homer Plessy. And I was able to learn about my ancestor for the first time when I was very young, but I was not very interested in finding out about it. My picture as a child and my great grandfather, who's Homer Plessy's first cousin. But what he did learn left him stunned. Keith Plessy's great grandfather, Joseph Gustav Plessy, was Homer Plessy's first cousin. In 1892, Homer Plessy, a black man, famously defied the separate car act in an act of protest. Just know that I was that close to the man, I, I didn't know I was related to him that way. Mother. So Keith started to dig more into his past, learning bits and pieces beyond what America knew about his distant relative. Most of that done with the help of Keith Weldon Metley, the author of We as Freeman, a book that focuses on the key players of the landmark Plessy versus Ferguson case. He actually introduced me to a cousin that was 200 years removed from the first two Plessys that came to the United States. These are some, some of my work from New York. Meanwhile, a photographer got a phone call from a man who bought the home of Judge John Howard Ferguson, who presided over the Plessy versus State of Louisiana case. The man who bought the judge's house on Henry Clay Avenue says he was looking for pictures. He wanted to find a family member who um, might have some photographs so he could renovate it. Wow. To its exact. This is Judge John Howard Ferguson. And while the photographer couldn't find pictures of the house, she did find something else. And what relation did you find out you had to the judge? I am the judge's great, great granddaughter. Wow. Yes, that was a bit of a shock. The photographer is Phoebe Ferguson, and with the help of Keith Medley, she was able to revisit a crossroads in history and meet the man whose name appears on one of the most consequential cases in the country, Plessy v. Ferguson. He said, hi, I'm Keith Plessy, and I said, hi, I'm Phoebe Ferguson. And then I just started apologizing for everything that ever happened, you know, from slavery to civil rights. I mean, it was just, it was just so... Um, difficult in a way to to know this history had harmed so many people for so long. Why do you feel like you carried that responsibility to apologize? I think it is the responsibility of all white citizens to understand their history, our history, and the legacy that it has left on an entire population of African-American citizens. I pol just politely forgave her for everything because I told her it's no longer Plessy versus Ferguson. It's Plessy and Ferguson. The chance meeting between two people whose relatives were on opposite ends of history turned into an opportunity to confront their past as a way to move forward, but this time together. We realized that our union could bring people together around equity and race issues. And we could use the history of the case to talk about those issues. And the Plessy and Ferguson Foundation was born. Plessy and Ferguson now travel the country sharing their journey of reconciliation and preservation. Even though we experienced the natural reconciliation when we met, we're learning more about how to bring people together. Throughout New Orleans, their foundation works to highlight sites of African-American achievement, and they do that by presenting historic markers. 
The first, of course, being the Plessy v. Ferguson marker, near the site where Homer Plessy was arrested for violating the separate car act, with the hopes those who read it understand the place their ancestors held in New Orleans history. We call ourselves yeah. partners in history. And from learning our history, we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. It's really about opening your heart and being willing to share a dialogue and listen to others and then be willing to act on, on what you're hearing and figure out how you can make a difference. Our coming together only matters if we can share that message, if we can share our shared history.